Over the space of a year, I made about a hundred forecasts about Nintendo's future actions and put them all up on YouTube for the world to see. Now, as the channel has passed 5,000 subscribers and hundreds of thousands of views, it could all come crashing down. It's the moment of truth as we look back to see what is the true value of a Nintendo forecast. So look, let's level with everybody. I've been a little nervous for this day as I knew that I always wanted Nintendo Forecast to aspire to live up to the ambition of its name. I wanted to create forecasts that were researched, measurable and accountable about the world's least predictable video gaming company. So let's examine what that goal really means. First, researched. Not every video is forecast focused and if you look back through my videos there are deep dives into Nintendo's developers, their financials and their gameplay philosophies along the way. A few are more speculative and discussion based, but as far as possible, if I say I expect something to happen, I try to contextualise that decision within the video. I also say that a forecast must be measurable. Nintendo YouTube is replete with this kind of content and these fall onto a spectrum from relatively grounded best case guesses to sheer flights of fancy. Occasionally people go back and see how they did. I always love Arlo's years in review, but frequently they're forgotten. So while the first way to make a prediction measurable is simply putting them online so anyone can check back and see what my judgments were at any particular point in time, something more than that is needed. To help with being measurable, I use a percentage metric using five broad categories of how likely I think something is to happen. 10% chance, 30%, 50%, 70% and a 90% chance. Why do I never give 100% or 0% chances? Well look, the world is an uncertain place. There are always black swan events that could, as the Japanese say, upend the tea table and take us into very uncertain waters. Sticking with just these five levels of likelihood is helpful to avoid that and they easily translate to five clear to understand stages. Very likely, likely, 50-50, unlikely and very unlikely. So, these forecasts are researched and measurable, but what about accountable? Here's the thing. Unlike strict predictions, I'm not just looking to call it and get it right. What I really want is for the percentage likelihoods to genuinely reflect the likelihood of an event happening. And look, I'm fallible, clearly. There are going to be calls I make that are way off base in one direction or the other. But in the aggregate, I would hope that if I'm saying something is a 30% chance, you should be able to look back through my forecasts and find that 30% of the time that forecast comes to pass and 70% of the time it does not. Similarly, my 50% call should be right 50% of the time, my 70% calls right 70% of the time and so on. I'm not going to be gutted if my 10% calls were on point only 6% of the time or 12% of the time or something, but I'd be concerned if they were right 36% of the time. This also allows me to calibrate how reasonable my estimates are. Should I be harsher with my predictions or more generous? This is the kind of thing that's important to see to be able to give a forecast that's accurate. The difficulty though is that it takes a very long time to build a track record. Because this channel is looking weeks, months, often though years into the future, I have dozens and dozens of forecasts where I can't yet say whether or not they've been accurate. The longer I do this, hopefully, the more data I should be able to have to judge accuracy. So currently only about a third of my forecasts, about 31, can be analysed and because of the small sample number, this is liable to provide some fairly erratic results. Still, in the interest of transparency, let's see where we are. The first thing that's clear to me is that I need to make a lot more 90% predictions. I don't tend to bother adding 90% predictions to things that seem almost obvious, but as a result there's not a lot I can go on to analyse my success in this particular metric. The one prediction I had was a Paper Mario title before 2025 and that is evidently as good as locked in. So on the evidence of a mere one forecast, my 90% forecasts are borne out 100% of the time. I have six 70% predictions and all of them have come to pass. They range from Aiting being involved in Pikmin to Paper Mario in 2024 to a good feel game with Nintendo by the end of 2025. So my 70% forecasts are also true 100% of the time. This is higher than I'd like and so I might need to take a little more risk with this tier of forecasting but I also have quite a lot of outstanding 70% forecasts that might tip the balance the next time I come to review them. For 50% predictions I have 9 where the results are in and 4 out of the 9 were true and 5 didn't happen. 
If I express the result as a percentage, it's 44%, but there's no way I can mathematically get to 50% with nine calls, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. The ones at 50% that I called were ND Cube launching a new title by December 2023, they co-developed Everyone Want to Switch, a June 2023 full general direct, Good Feel developing Princess Peach Showtime, and a new mobile title by the end of 2024, which was the Pokemon trading card game. I also have one 50% call that is partially borne out, which is that Nintendo Switch would have three more games to sell at least 5 million before the end of its life. Super Mario Bros. Wonder easily passed this milestone. Super Mario RPG reportedly sold 3.14 million as of December 2023, so I think there's a passable chance that if it shows the same kind of legs as many Mario titles, then it could cross 5 million in the coming years. There's also a good chance that this could come to pass with cross-gen titles. For example, if the next Mario Kart is cross-gen, you could easily imagine 5 million people picking it up on the Switch rather than, uh, shelling out for the new console. So I'm pretty pleased that my 50% predictions are really on track to be as close as possible to 50%. What about the 30% predictions? This is by far the category where I have the most forecasts to go off, 12 in all, and so the data should be more accurate. And I'm really pleased with my numbers here. Four out of the 12 came to pass, which at 33% is as close as I can mathematically get to 30% with only 12 predictions. The ones that came off were that ND Cube would release a generic party title, and everyone wanted to switch was that game, that there would be a digital first release by the end of 2023, Pikmin 1 plus 2 being that title, and that Holiday 23 would feature 2D Mario and Detective Pikachu. The ones that didn't pan out were an ND Cube Mario Party, an ND Cube Animal Crossing game, a new Paper Mario art style, a Pikmin 4 Direct, Metroid Prime 4 in Holiday 2023, Wario Land in Holiday 23, and Goodfield doing another Yoshi game. Okay then, let's get down to the 10% calls. I do find these tricky. On the one hand, they're the most fun. Nintendo as a company is incredibly unpredictable. They literally aim to surprise you. And so this category allows us to really explore the strange and bizarre possibilities they could offer. And on the other hand, for a viewer of the channel, I wonder if it's less satisfying to hear a forecast and then hear it's incredibly unlikely to happen. Who tunes into the weather forecast in summer, only to hear, well, it almost certainly won't snow? Still, this channel tries to be bound by strict evidence, and I'll grant that the 10% are the ones where the dog of speculation can get away from the leash. However, looking back, there are times I really should have crystallized a 10% prediction. I gave a likelihood for Goodfield developing Princess Peach, but although I scripted 10% predictions for next level games in EPD8, I never put them into the recording, and so now I can't add those to my total. So, as a result, in terms of 10% shouts, I only have four solid predictions. Three of them didn't transpire. A Platinum title for the end of 2023, a Mario Party game by the end of 2023, and a Mario and Luigi game as Goodfield's next release. But the last one is actually a little trickier to judge. I tried to word these predictions so they avoid ambiguous answers, but I worded this one as good feel developing a new IP with Nintendo for their next game. I was thinking of something completely new like Astral Chain with Platinum, but actually Princess Peach Showtime, it could be argued, is not new at all. However, even though it's not Peach's first game, it is the first in this series, and just as Wario Land and WarioWare should really be treated as separate entities, despite sharing a title character, I'm going to say that this one did come to pass. That means my 10% calls have come off 25% of the time. So overall, my 90% predictions have a 100% track record, my 70% predictions also have a 100% track record, my 50% predictions have a 44% track record, my 30% predictions have a 33% track record, and my 10% predictions have a 25% track record. So what are the lessons to learn in order to calibrate forecasting antennae even better in the future? First, I should make more forecasts, particularly in the 10% and 90% category, in order to build up a picture of how accurate I'm being. Usually, when I make a specific forecast, I make a big thing of it and splash it on the screen, but I think when it's something near certain one way or the other, I can probably mention these more briefly in passing, but keep track of the prediction to give a bit more evidence for my level of accuracy. I'm pleased with my 50% and 30% calls based on no data. It's the 70% calls which are currently a little too safe. I think in many ways this 70% window is the hardest one of all to call. Things that are more probable than not, but not so likely that they're absolutely bound to happen. 
please hit the subscribe button on the screen and check out these other videos for more Nintendo forecasts. Thank you very much.